Week one of the NFL preseason is in the books, and believe it or not, we learned a lot about what to expect from the 2024 fantasy football landscape, including some pretty massive shakeups in my rankings and in my 2024 fantasy football draft guide. So, in episode 32 of Inside the 20 by Basement Brood Fantasy Football, let's talk about what we learned from week one of the NFL preseason and how it should impact your 2024 fantasy football draft strategy. For starters, we learned a ton about the new look Chicago Bears and how they will deploy their brand new offense under offensive coordinator Shane Waldron and flashy rookie Caleb Williams. And that includes fantasy football insights at almost every single position that's relevant for fantasy football. We learned how the Chicago Bears will deploy their three-headed wide receiver room, and we learned several really shocking surprises at both the tight end and the running back level. Now. To start with the wide receiver room, not too many surprises there, right? We saw DJ Moore and Keenan Allen both play 17 of a possible 20 snaps with Caleb Williams, or about 85% of the offensive snaps with the first team. And then we saw the Bears' ninth overall pick and one of the biggest wide receiver prospects in this year's draft class, Roma Dunze, mix in as the Bears' clear-cut wide receiver three. He played 11 of a possible 20 snaps with Caleb Williams, a.k.a. 55% of the offensive snaps with the first team. He is the clear-cut wide receiver three in Chicago with plenty of upside should anything happen to one of the two guys that are in front of him in DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. Now, I'm not going to read too much into this because it's a teeny tiny sample size. It was the first game of the preseason, etc., etc. But I am at least going to mention, so you can do with this what you will, but DJ Moore was on the receiving end of three of a possible seven Caleb Williams targets, aka 43% of the times that Caleb Williams threw the football, they headed in DJ Moore's direction. Now, should we expect DJ Moore to have a 43% target share? Of course not. But if there was any doubt about who is going to function as the Chicago Bears clear-cut wide receiver one, we may have gotten a glimpse into the answer to that question. Now, as for some of the other pass catchers in the Chicago Bears offense, we saw some pretty concerning usage for Cole Komet, a guy that was expected to be their number one tight end in 2024. Cole Komet played just 11 of a possible 20 offensive snaps with Caleb Williams, which is just over 50% at 55. Meanwhile, their free agent signee Gerald Everett, who by the way, worked with their new offensive coordinator Shane Waldron with the Seahawks in 2021, which, by the way, was the second best statistical career of Gerald Everett's career. And Gerald Everett, in the same game as Cole Komet, played 14 of a possible 20 snaps with Caleb Williams. So he played about 70% of the offensive snaps with the first team offense, while Cole Komet only played 55% of the offensive snaps. Now, that said, to throw at least a little bit of water on the fire, both guys, both Gerald Everett and Cole Komet, ran five routes in Caleb Williams' offense, and Cole Komet did have two targets compared to just zero for Gerald Everett. Still, neither one of these guys, neither Cole Komet nor Gerald Everett, looks like a desirable option in 2024 fantasy football, and Cole Komet is plummeting down my rankings in my 2024 fantasy football draft guide. He's plummeting down ADP on other fantasy football websites, and it's a bummer for the guy because he was previously being drafted as a top 15, top 16 tight end in 2024 fantasy football, but that no longer looks like it's going to be the case. Very, very concerning usage in that preseason game for Cole Komet. As concerning as Cole Komet's usage was, as surprising as Cole Komet's usage was, that has nothing on what happened in the Chicago Bears running back room in the recent preseason game against the Buffalo Bills. We saw a gigantic, shocking development in the Bears' backfield. Now, if you look at DeAndre Swift's box score, you might get really, really excited to see that the guy had 42 receiving yards. That's really exciting on the surface, but when you dig in deeper, you recognize that A, that was all on one play, and B, 
That was on one of two plays that DeAndre Swift played with the first string offense with Caleb Williams. DeAndre Swift played just two of a possible 20 offensive snaps with Caleb Williams. Meanwhile, Khalil Herbert, who is basically free in 2024 fantasy football drafts, he played 14 of a possible 20 snaps with Caleb Williams and the first string offense. He handled nine of the team's 10 carries. He ran three more routes than DeAndre Swift. In fact, Khalil Herbert ran as many routes with four. He ran as many routes as Roma Dunze ran. The point is, DeAndre Swift's ADP looks like it's way too high right now for where he apparently stands in the Chicago Bears depth chart with the first string offense. Meanwhile, Khalil Herbert's ADP needs to climb, and it will climb. He needs to be drafted significantly higher than he has been recently, where he's being drafted around pick 199 overall, and he flew up my rankings in my 2024 fantasy football draft guide. Are you a software wizard? A code ninja? a forge master, or maybe even just a mad scientist? Then come build your career ladder with Infinity Labs, an award-winning technology company, best place to work, and business of the year with best-in-class benefits and compensation. Visit i-labs.tech, that's i-labs.tech today, where you can learn more about Infinity Labs, our expanding national presence, and why the status quo has no hold on us. Let's take this thing over to Washington, right? One of the more fascinating offenses to try and get a hold of in 2024 fantasy football, given all of the changes they've made over this offseason. New head coach, new offensive coordinator, new franchise quarterback. They brought in Austin Eckler. What insights were we able to learn from their most recent preseason game? For starters, the commander's backfield is looking like it's going to be a near even timeshare between Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler, with Brian Robinson serving as more of the primary ball carrier and Austin Eckler serving as more of the pass-catching weapon in Washington. Brian Robinson played six of a possible 11 snaps with Jaden Daniels and that first-string offense. He ran one route with zero targets, and he did handle five of Washington's eight total carries with that first-string offense. And then Austin Eckler, while Brian Robinson played six of 11 snaps, Eckler played five of a possible 11 snaps, but he ran two routes, and the max was only three, by the way. Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dots, and John Bates, all those guys ran just three routes. Austin Eckler ran two, and he was on the receiving end of one of just three targets that Jane Daniels put in the air. Eckler also contributed two carries of his own. So TLDR, Brian Robinson's getting about half the snaps, Austin Eckler's getting about half the snaps, and Robinson appears to be the preferred ball carrier, while Eckler prefers to be the preferred pass catching specialist. Not that any of that is even the slightest bit surprising. In fact, it's looking a lot like what we predicted way back in episode nine, when we were talking about Austin Eckler's arrival in Washington and how offensive coordinator Cliff Kingsbury prefers to deploy his running backs. This week's preseason game was a very good indicator, a very good blueprint of what we should expect from Washington moving forward in 2024 fantasy football. I will say that I came out of Washington's preseason game liking both Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler a little bit more than I had been in previous weeks. I moved both of those guys up just a smidge in my 2024 fantasy football draft guide. And the reason for that is Jaden Daniels was on the field for 11 offensive snaps. So in theory, the Washington Commander's first string offense was on the field for 11 offensive snaps. And in that time, the commander's backfield handled seven carries on 11 snaps, and Austin Eckler had one of Jaden Daniels' three targets. In other words, of 11 offensive plays that Jaden Daniels ran, the backfield was involved with eight of them. And not only that, the Washington commanders ran the ball eight out of 11 times that Jaden Daniels was on the field, or about 73% of the time. Now, of course, take this all with a grain of salt. 
understand that it's the first preseason game. It's a tiny sample size. But still, it was our first indicator that the Washington Commanders very well may be one of the more run-heavy football teams in the entire NFL in 2024. Now, one final thing to note about the Washington Commanders, or at least what we learned about them in their most recent preseason game, and this one actually comes from PFF's Nate Yonke. And if you don't follow Nate on Twitter, I highly recommend changing that. The dude's an absolute magician when it comes to charting offensive snaps and basically charting offensive usage for anybody who's relevant in fantasy football. In case in point, Nate noticed that Jahan Dotson ran the majority of his routes in this most recent preseason game from the slot. And that's noteworthy because in years past, Curtis Samuel served as the team's slot receiver. So Jahan Dotson moving into the slot should work wonders for his target share, his potential volume, and should boost him up rankings a little bit more in PPR leagues as he should see more raw targets than he has in years past. And one other observation that Nate made, Cliff Kingsbury's Arizona Cardinals from 2019 to 2022 Cliff Kingsbury's slot receivers caught the second most passes in the NFL during that time, and now they're playing Jahan Dotson in that role in Cliff Kingsbury's offense. Great catch, great work by Nate Yankee. Again, I highly recommend giving him a follow over on Twitter. Baseman Brood Fantasy Football's 2024 Draft Guide is a resource that BBFF subscribers are using to dominate their drafts and get ahead of their league mates before that first football is even kicked in week one. It contains 300 players and it's complete with rankings that are going to help with tough decisions, tiers that help you plan for future draft picks, 2024 analysis and previews for all 300 players, stoplights that suggest the perfect time to draft a player, wait for a player, or reach for a player that you absolutely must have on your roster, and an ADP tracker that shows you which direction a player is trending in real drafts over the last several weeks. The draft guide is built and maintained with 30 plus hours of weekly research and over 300 real drafts done by yours truly. It's like you're walking into your fantasy draft having done 300 of your own to prepare. It's $14.99 per year and you can find it using the link that we left for you in the show notes. Let's talk about the Tennessee Titans for a minute. We saw very, very similar trends with the Tennessee Titans backfield that we saw when we looked at the Washington Commanders. Now, in their most recent game against the 49ers, we saw a near-even split for Tennessee Titans running backs between free agent Tony Pollard and the incumbent J. Spears. Now, Tony Pollard played 8 of a possible 14 offensive snaps with starting quarterback Will Levis, including 4 of the team's 7 carries that came out of the backfield. Meanwhile... Ty J. Spares played six of a possible 14 snaps with Will Levis, handling three of the seven carries that came out of the Titans' backfield. Now, the near-even timeshare, that's important. It's relevant. It's good information to have. It's not necessarily all that surprising. But the biggest takeaway that I had from the Tennessee Titans' preseason game against the San Francisco 49ers is how involved both running backs were in the team's offense while Will Levis was on the field. Now, for starters, both running backs combined for seven carries in only 14 Will Levis snaps. So half the time Will Levis was on the field, he handed the ball to either Ty J. Spears or Tony Pollard. But beyond that, Tony Pollard and Ty J. Spears combined for three of just five Will Levis targets in the entire game, meaning... In the 14 offensive snaps that Will Levis played, 10 of those footballs went to the Tennessee Titans' backfield in either Tony Pollard or Ty J. Spears. Now, obviously, take that with a DeAndre Hopkins-sized grain of salt, considering Nuke didn't play in this preseason game. But as of right now, it's certainly looking like the Tennessee Titans' offense, as much as they can, is going to run through the Titans' backfield. They are going to be the offensive engine for the Tennessee Titans in 2024, while the Titans continue to break in Will Levis as their franchise quarterback. In other noteworthy observations that followed the Tennessee Titans preseason game. Traylon Burks, of all people, played more offensive snaps with Will Levis in the first team offense than anybody else on the team. He played 13 of 14 snaps with Will Levis, which was more than everybody, including Calvin Ridley, by the way. Now, to be clear, do not 
read into that. Traylon Burks isn't the wide receiver one. It's nothing like that. Calvin Ridley was still on the receiving end of two of just five Will Levis targets. Calvin Ridley is going to be fine. The, the observation here is more about how involved Traylon Burks was, which wasn't necessarily expected to be the case considering the Titans have DeAndre Hopkins. They brought in Calvin Ridley. They brought in Tyler Boyd. They brought in Tony Pollard. Now, DeAndre Hopkins didn't play in this game, but still, the fact that Traylon Burks played more snaps than anybody in that first string offense, it's at least noteworthy, noteworthy considering Traylon Burks is f- completely free in 2024 fantasy football drafts right now. Oh yeah, and by the way, Chiga Conquo, the Tennessee Titans' number one tight end, he played just eight of a possible 14 snaps with Will Levis in the first string offense. He had no targets from Will Levis. I hadn't been drafting any of Chiga Conquo coming into the Titans' preseason game, and that definitely didn't change coming out of it. Really quickly, if you're wondering why Drafters.com is my best ball platform of choice, there's really three main reasons. Number one, the ADP is really friendly. The ADP is really soft. There's money to be won. There's prizes and tournaments to be won. Number two, you can do a fast draft, which is 30 seconds per pick, or you can just rack up a whole bunch of slow drafts all at once because slow drafts allow up to eight hours per pick. I literally have over 40 drafts going right now as we speak. And number three, you can join contests for as low as $1.10. Easy, easy platform to play on. You can play on desktop or PC. You can play on uh, your the mobile app. And if you're the type of person who enjoys doing a mock draft to get ready for 2024 fantasy football season, I highly recommend instead doing best ball drafts because they're just like mock drafts, but with a little bit of skin in the game, a little bit more fun. If you want to give drafters a try, I left a link for you down below in the show notes. And if you enter promo code BBFF when you're making your first deposit, drafters is going to 100% match your first deposit up to $100. It's like you have a free $100 to play fantasy football with. Use promo code BBFF when making that first deposit. All right, let's talk about the New Orleans Saints and what we learned about them during their most recent game against the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals. For starters, it is Chris Olave season. In episode five, I raved all about Chris Olave and his potential fit with their new offensive coordinator, Clint Kubiak. And lo and behold, in their first preseason game this year against the Arizona Cardinals, Chris Olave played, unsurprisingly, played eight of nine snaps with Derek Carr. But more mouthwateringly than that, Derek Carr threw just four passes three of which went to Chris Olave. Now, obviously, the guy's not going to have a 75% target share, but man, he is going to get fed this year. Now, behind Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid is likely going to serve as the team's wide receiver, too. He did not play in this preseason game, but we did learn who the New Orleans Saints' number three wide receiver is in the rotation, at least as of right now. Cedric Wilson looks like he is going to be the clear wide receiver three for Derek Carr. He played nine of a possible nine snaps with Derek Carr, while the presumed wide receiver three, A.T. Perry, played just one snap with Derek Carr in the first-team offense. It looks like it's going to be free agent Cedric Wilson that's running as the team's wide receiver three. And of course, you can't talk about the New Orleans Saints without talking about Taysom Hill, who, by the way, if you play on a platform where Taysom Hill is listed as a tight end, he's an absolute cheat code at that position, especially in best ball leagues where you don't have to predict which weeks he will be involved, which weeks he won't be involved, which has long been the challenge for Taysom Hill in twenty in fantasy football. Now, in this most recent preseason game against the Arizona Cardinals, Taysom Hill was plenty involved. He played six of a possible nine snaps with Derek Carr in the first-team offense. He ran four routes, and once again, credit to PFF's Nate Yankee for catching that Taysom Hill was used basically all over the formation. He ran routes from out wide, in the slot, he played in line at tight end, he lined up in the backfield. It looks like, once again, Taysom Hill is going to be very much involved as a wild card type of option in the Saints offense. He's an absolute cheat code if you can get him as a tight end in fantasy football, especially in best ball leagues. Last note for the Saints is that Jamal Williams is a guy who's climbing my rankings just a little bit. He's entering my fantasy football radar just a little bit. Now, Kendra Miller, their second year running back, he did not 
play in this game, which likely gave Jamal Williams more of an opportunity to leave his mark for the New Orleans Saints. But Kendra Miller hasn't exactly had the most glowing offseason, hasn't had the most glowing training camp. He's drawn the ire of some of the Saints uh, coaching staff and some of the comments that they've made in recent press conferences and interviews with the media. But instead of the New Orleans Saints running Alvin Kamara for all nine of the nine snaps that Derek Carr was on the field, Alvin Kamara played just six of those offensive snaps, giving the other three to Jamal Williams. So, no, it's not going to be any like 50 50 timeshare. But it does look like the Saints do want to have two running backs involved in this offense. And Jamal Williams is just as good a bet as anybody, especially Kendra Miller, to be the Saints RB2 entering the season. And that especially holds some some value if anything were to ever happen to Alvin Kamara. So Jamal Williams isn't somebody you should be going out of your way to get in your drafts, but he's definitely somebody who belongs on the 2024 fantasy football radar. He shouldn't be going completely undrafted in 20 round contests like he does on on best ball leagues on drafters. All right, let's talk about Joe Burrow's new wide receiver three and who that's going to be once Tyler Boyd left and went to the Tennessee Titans. Now, the Cincinnati Bengals drafted Jermaine Burton, who looked like he was going to have a legitimate shot to be the Cincinnati Bengals number three wide receiver behind Jamar Chase and T. Higgins in 2024 fantasy football. But In their first preseason game, not only did Jermaine Burton play zero offensive snaps with Joe Burrow and the first team, the first string offense, he appeared to be no better than eighth in line on the Bengals' wide receiver depth chart. Now, there's obviously plenty of time, plenty of time to climb that depth chart and work his way into the rotation, but as of right now, Jermaine Burton is nowhere near three wide receiver sets in Joe Burrow's offense. Instead, it's looking like second-year wide receiver Andre Iosivas, who is the current best bet to be the Bengals' wide receiver three, the current best bet to fill Tyler Boyd's shoes. He manned the slot in uh, their most recent recent preseason game. He played 12 of 13 snaps with Joe Burrow. He garnered one of Joe Burrow's six targets. Iosivas is completely free in 2024 fantasy football drafts currently, but he is a guy that is flying up the rankings in my 2024 fantasy football draft guide. Want to compete against me in a fantasy football league where you can win up to $50,000? Is that a... Nope, not a typo. That is... You heard me correctly. $50,000. I'm partnering up with Full Time Fantasy and Circa, and I am hosting the Fantasy Football Championships. It's a 12-team PPR redraft league with up to $2,500 worth of prizes in our 12-team league alone. But the top four scorers from our 12-team league automatically advance to Circa's grand prize round where there's there's $75,000 worth of prizes, including a $50,000 cash prize for the grand prize winner in the grand prize round. It costs $349 to play, and I am taking the next seven participants on a first-come, first-served basis. The league is almost about halfway full, and I'm looking for the next seven. So come play fantasy football with me using the link that we left for you in the show notes. All right, let's talk real quick about the wide receiver two role for the Denver Broncos. Now, during this offseason, Denver got rid of Jerry Judy, creating a big void, a big hole for somebody to step in and be the team's wide receiver two. It could have been last year's second-round pick, Marvin Mims. It could have been this year's draft pick, Troy Franklin. But instead, in their first preseason game just a couple days ago, it was good old Tim Patrick who ran almost every single snap with the first-team offense. He played 11 of 12 snaps with the first-string offense and very much looks like he is going to at least start the season as the team's wide receiver two in Denver. Marvin Mims played just one snap, although it was the very first snap uh, on offense, which is weird. And Troy Franklin didn't play with the first string offense at all. As of right now, it looks like it's going to be Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick as the top two wide receivers in Denver for what that's worth. Likewise, in Pittsburgh, we got a pretty strong indication of who is going to at least open the season as the Steelers' number two wide receiver, and that looks like it's going to be Van Jefferson, who played just as many offensive snaps with the first string offense 
as George Pickens did. Both guys played 15 of 17 snaps with Justin Fields. Now, Pittsburgh did play this game without their rookie, Roman Wilson, although Wilson is largely considered to be a slot wide receiver candidate battling Calvin Austin for the slot wide receiver role. So as of right now, it's looking like it's going to be George Pickens and Van Jefferson in two wide receiver sets for the Pittsburgh Steelers for what that's worth. That's going to be all for today's episode, and I got to tell you, there is a lot, a lot more where that came from. In fact, we've been talking about it all week inside of my Fantasy Football Discord server. We just, quite frankly, don't have the time to get into all of it today. But if you want more, if you want to be included on the discussions that we've been having about the Jaguars wide receivers and the Chiefs wide receivers post Marquise Brown and the Texans wide receivers, if you want to be included on future conversations that we're going to have with week two of the preseason and week three of the preseason, all you have to do is join my fantasy football Discord server. BBFF's online community and Discord server that's filled with sharp fantasy football brains and NFL fans that are dedicated to helping each other outsmart their friends, dominate their leagues, cash in on NFL bets, and take down DFS contests. You can join us while the cost is less than one beer per month using the link that we left for you in the show notes. And when you do, Keep an eye on your email because you're going to automatically receive a promo code for 25 or even 50% off of my 2024 Fantasy Football Draft Guide or my 2024 Heat Maps, which are the resource that started this entire business. That's all for today. I will see you on the Fantasy Football field, and I hope to see you in the basement, which is my Fantasy Football Discord server. Cheers. This brew is for you.